Hi, this is Nephropocus. Let's do a VEXA scan. So to do a VEXA, you can use either a phased array transducer or a curvilinear transducer. Um, I generally prefer curvilinear transducer because we are scanning the abdomen and phased array, the settings are more optimized for um, cardiac scanning. And that way, like when doing Doppler, you might have to adjust a lot of settings such as scale and wall filters um, to suit for the abdominal scanning. And when using curvilinear transducer, you put that in the cardiac preset. Uh, it depends on the machine, but my machine allows the EKG to be run simultaneously only when it is in the cardiac preset. So my indicator is on this side of the screen. So let's scan the IVC, which is the first step in VEXES. I have already hooked up the EKG leads and I'm placing the transducer in the sub xiphoid area with the orientation marker towards patient's head. So I find the IVC right away, it looks like. And here we have the liver, you have the IVC, and I'm going to optimize it uh, by uh, fanning the transducer as well as gently rotating it to make sure I'm getting the maximal diameter of the IVC somewhere here. So you can measure the uh, diameter of the inferior vena cava just below the hepatic vein IVC junction if you want, or you can just eyeball and, and see if it's more than two centimeters or less than two centimeters if it appears plethoric or not. And then once you find the IVC, you rotate the transducer 90 degrees such that you find the vessel in its short axis. That way, by measuring the anterior posterior diameter in the short axis, you get a sense of um, if you are falling prey to cylinder effect in long axis or not. Also, uh, sometimes the vessel might appear plethoric in long axis. And when you look at it in the short axis, it, it's more or less oval and it might not be really plethoric. So once you do the IVC measurement, um, look at it. I'll go to the right upper quadrant and do rest of the Doppler assessment from right upper quadrant because we are likely to get better waveforms uh, when we use this window as opposed to sub xiphoid window. So to do that, um, I'm placing the transducer with the orientation marker towards patient's head in mid to uh, posterior axillary line, somewhere here, where I'm expected to find the liver. I'm gonna increase the depth a little bit. So somewhere here, I can see three vessels here. I see one, two, and three. So the vessel that is attached to the liver and uh, that is uh, closer to the ultrasound transducer would be inferior vena cava. And we are looking at the side to side diameter and not the anterior posterior diameter. And this vessel that is farther from the ultrasound beam is the aorta, the abdominal aorta. So this is called the double barrel shotgun view with the IVC and aorta being two barrels. And here you can see the hepatic vein joining the inferior vena cava. So now let's focus on hepatic vein by reducing the depth and turn on the color Doppler. So when I put the color Doppler, you can see some mixture of colors. It's probably because my scale is set too low. I'm going to increase the scale to about 25-ish, 25 to 30. And now you can see uh, the vessel is mostly blue, conveying that the blood is flowing away from the transducer. Now I'll turn on the pulse wave mode and get the sample volume to the middle of the vessel. So as you can see here, the patient is normally breathing. It's a quiet respiration uh, and we got a tracing. And if it is difficult to do it in quiet respiration, you can always ask the patient to hold their breath in expiration. Um, but here, what we are seeing is uh, we have the EKG. So you know, where is the QRS complex and the wave that is following the QRS complex would be systolic wave. So here you see the systolic wave. Uh, followed by a notch that is the V wave followed by the diastolic wave and here the small thing here is the A wave. A wave is better seen uh, in expiration than in inspiration because in inspiration your forward velocities increase and in expiration your above the baseline velocities increase. So this is a normal hepatic vein waveform. Maybe we'll get one more with the patient holding breath that way you'll see that it appears more uh, uniform. Let me put the color again once we find the vessel better, we can ask him to hold the breath. Okay, sir, can you hold your breath? Okay. Now you can see that the waveform is much more uniform. Uh, thank you, breathe normally. So here you have the systolic wave followed by V wave, the diastolic wave, uh, and here is the A wave. Yeah, okay. But make sure the patient doesn't perform Valsalva maneuver inadvertently because that would blunt your waveform. So after finding the hepatic vein, so maybe we should uh, look gently anterior 
to find the portal vein. So portal vein carries blood from intestines and goes into the liver. So as a tilt of uh, probe anterior, it's a very gentle movement. I'm not even like really re uh, relocating the uh, transducer. So here you can see the portal vein. And on color, as you know, it appears red because the flow is towards the transducer. So let's turn on the color. So this thing is the portal vein. And let's uh, put the Doppler uh, sample here. Yeah, I'm gonna reduce, uh, sorry, increase the scale a little bit. And you can see that there is respiratory variation. Um, here, during inspiration, the waveform is increasing and during expiration, the amplitude is reducing. But in general, the waveform appears to be slightly pulsatile. But that's fine in um, otherwise healthy young subjects who are uh, athletic, the portal vein tends to be slightly pulsatile at baseline and that's not abnormal. It's similar to being inferior vena cava being um, slightly dilated. So again, like uh, let's get this waveform in breath holding. So let's find the vessel again. And sir, can you hold your breath? Okay. Now you'll get a much crispier waveform when the patient is holding their breath. Thank you. Breathe normally. Excellent. I mean, if you really want to measure the pulsatility, uh, you just go to the highest point in one cardiac cycle and the lowest point uh, in the same cardiac cycle and uh, uh, you can express the points in percentage. In this case, uh, it's uh, approximately 50%. Again, like I said, in, in this particular patient or the subject, it's completely normal. And after I do the portal vein, I'm gonna go find the right kidney. You can either um, sample the right kidney or left kidney, whichever is easy to find. But I think right kidney is easier to find in most cases because liver works like a window to the kidney. So kidney is posterior, so I'm gonna sweep the transducer posterior. I see that the kidney is appearing and I have to go inferior to find the kidney uh, better. So here is the kidney and because we are using curvilinear transducer, there are some rib shadows. Sometimes you might not be able to escape them and sometimes you might be able to escape with gentle probe movement, I mean rotation. And here we don't need this much depth, so I'm gonna reduce the depth and zoom on the kidney. So let's put the color Doppler here. So I, here we see some uh, black structures which are medullary pyramids and we want to sample the vessels that are running parallel to the medullary pyramids which are interlobar vessels. So for kidney, uh, you can benefit from a lower scale. I'm gonna lower the scale to about 15, 10-ish and you can see much more uh, color pickup. So uh, here breath holding is really necessary. So can you please hold your breath? Yeah, I'm gonna sample these interlobar vessels and you are getting a nice tracing above and below the baseline. Thank you, breathe normally. So above the baseline is the arterial waveform. Here you have systolic spike followed by diastole, systole, diastole, and you have below the baseline continuous waveform, which is the venous waveform. And it doesn't have any breaks or discontinuities in cardiac cycle. So that's completely normal. So let's save this image.